uh, we've been continuing our foundational classes or our errors training classes just to find a foundational series. So we've talked about faith, uh, just to reemphasize is the reason why the classes start with faith, because everything we do uh, in the kingdom of God, we attach our faith to it. So scripture says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we can get into new birth, baptism, Holy Spirit, communion. Uh, you can get into all those different things, but without faith, you know, uh, they're just uh, rituals. Or, you know, without faith and you go in that water for baptism, you're just being, you just getting wet. You know, but if you attach your faith to it, that old man is dying and the new man is rising. Same thing with the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, ministering baptism of the Holy Spirit for years, the number one challenge is, especially for people that are analytical or people that are in control, is to just float. Well, it takes a lot of faith to float and yield to submerging in the spirit. So like to go through all, all the baptisms, to be baptized into the body of Christ, because that's what happens. You're, you're, you're baptized into the body of Christ and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, submerged into the body. And then you go through the water baptism. That's the old man down and new man rising. You're, you're, you're being buried to the old man and the new man is, is uh, coming alive. And then you're submerged in the spirit in the infilling. You're baptized into the Holy Spirit. All those things take faith. All that takes faith. So those, uh, uh, those are the things that we talked about up to today. And the ultimate thing, uh, one of the uh, key things that we'll always talk about, especially this church, is the Word. And so we're going to talk about understanding the value of the Word, understanding the value of the Word. And it's not my notes, but I'm going to give you this scripture because uh, it was a part of my devotion this morning. Uh, Acts 10.44. Acts 10.44. I don't have to add it to my notes, but this is a... Uh, right, so you had a... Uh, you had a... Uh, Cornelius was a guy that gave alms. So alms is, was, you know, his offering. He always uh, just gave offerings. Um, not necessarily... Uh, trying to be seen. The scripture says in Matthew, you know, when you give alms, it's not to be seen of others. You know, you give in secret and God will reward you privately. But he constantly gave alms. So because of his alms, you know, he has this vision. And God gives him this vision. He tells him to go to Peter. So he goes to Peter. When he goes to Peter, because God wanted him to be saturated in the spirit. Here he had a heart. He was given into God's kingdom. But God wanted him to have some power. So so him and and his people and the other Gentiles. So, so they come to Peter, and Peter starts to speak all the way from the prophets up to the point where the Holy Spirit fell on them on the day of Pentecost. He starts to break it all down. And verse 44 says this, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And, you know, as, and as a growing church, we're a growing church, and, and the you know, most wonderful thing about being in the kingdom of God is signs, wonders, and miracles. But people underestimate the value of getting the word first. You know, study through uh, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus came into the town. And he saw all these uh, diseases. He saw the people dealing with disease and sickness. And when he saw the people dealing with disease and sickness, he, he, he started to preach to them. It didn't say, the, the, you know, the first thing wasn't just they're going to be operating and uh, uh, we're just going to operate in the gifts. He was like, they, they're going to have to attach their faith to what I'm trying to get to them. So the only way they're going to get that faith is through the word. You know, faith comes by hearing the word. So Jesus preached for quite some time. And it said he went through the city and healed all manner of diseases. So even here, you could say when they heard the word, the Holy Spirit fell on them. The value of, of having the word first. All right, so the, the foundation for a successful spiritual life, and um, we'll get into the other one in our next class, but the word of God and prayer. That's our foundation to a successful spiritual life, the word of God in prayer. Let's go to Psalms 130, 
138. Psalms 138. But read verse 2. It says, I will worship toward thy holy temple. So I'm going to lift up my hands toward thy holy temple, the value of being in church, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. That thou hast magnified, enlarged the word above thy name. Now, why did he do that? Now, let's, let's go here to uh, John 1. Uh, John 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And then, of course, verse 14 says, uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, uh, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We'll, we'll get into that in the next service. That, that actually ties right into what we're going to be talking about later. So let's go to Matthew 4. And, you know, as, as me and my wife grow as leaders, uh, most of the time what we find out when people are having a deficiency, it's the word. Uh, we were talking this week and how um, even when we talk, uh, and as we go through stuff, if if we, if a person is clouded, they they don't always know they're clouded. So, I mean, that's how you when you're clouded, it creates blind spots. So there's something you can't see, but that doesn't mean you're not going to hold a conversation, and you're not assuming that you can see. He was playing with a guy this week, and he was. Uh, just getting a little emotional. <laughs> we'll put it that way. He's getting emotional. But when you talk to him, he couldn't see himself. And he was, and he was holding a conversation as if, what's wrong with y'all? He just, there's some things he couldn't see. So the, the, the thing is, we, uh, we'll get into this next, the, the, in the next service. The thing is that we all have blind spots. So we can't trust ourselves. But so God has given us the word so we can see. You know, the interests of the word bring up light. It gives understanding to the simple. So now we can assess things better. But you, how do you know you're, you're properly assessing that? Is it based on the word? Because if you're not spending time in the word, what do you plan on for? How you feel? What you think. Not how, not how God feels and what God thinks. And so, you know, you know I guess... It's something in our, our, our DNA where I'm around church and I acknowledge God and I sang a worship song and that means we can see. Because I, I said Jesus like probably like 15 times this week. You should have heard me how many times I said Jesus and God. You know, even, you know, you, know, you got some, some artists, you know, I, uh, I dedicate at least one song on my album to God. And you say, what God? You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's, this is so valuable, but we take it for granted. And look, look here, Matthew 4, it says, uh, uh, verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth. So how do we have time not to be in his word? Now, we're, we're, it, we're, we're absorbing something. So we're not just walking around with our eyes closed and our ears closed through the course of a day. So when you're not absorbing his word, you're absorbing something. So the question is, what are you putting before God's word? And, and how close is it going to get you to ultimately the fulfillment that God has for your life? You know, you like, like, man, you know, because of my schedule, man, I just can't. You know, man, I, I just don't have time to put my face in this book because of the, my schedule. You know, my schedule's big. I mean, I got this. I got this going on. But you spend time with Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Man, my schedule, man. I, mean, I ain't got time. But, but, but you making sure your followers keep up on you on Twitter. <laughs> you tweeting left and right. But you don't have time. Every, every time you tweet of something, you could have read a, read a verse. You have to read through Facebook. You have to read about the stats in the NFL, the NBA, whatever. Or that article, I can't believe. Did you hear about what such and such did? Slap around on him. You have to read that. 
you know, you're checking out the article because it flashed up uh, Yahoo News, right? So, so you had to go, oh, seriously? So you had to, you read that, but you can't read the word? You're reading all the time. You don't have time to listen to the word. You're listening to stuff all the time. So man shall not live by every word, uh, by uh, bread alone, but every word that proceeds by the mouth of God. The amount of word you have on the inside of you is a major difference between success and fulfillment in your Christian life. The amount of word that you have on the inside is the difference between success, fulfillment, and failure. How much word do you have on your inside? Joshua 1 8. Meditate. Let's go. Let's look at it. I want you to see these scriptures today. So let's just go to Joshua. All right. So uh, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So when I open my mouth, this book of the law is what's going to come out. And it won't depart. It says, Look, but thou shalt meditate. This is after the semicolon. But thou shalt meditate. Um, Therein, day and night, and thou that thou mayest observe to do. So I'm observing to do according to all that is written. All, not some of the things, all that is written therein. For then shall, uh, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. All right, and then we got Hosea, Hosea 4, verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no, no, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou has forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. So, so we don't want God forget, <laughs> forgetting us or the family. So God is saying, don't forget me. Don't forget my word. And it's, it's the, you know, the measure you meet shall be measured back to you. So the thing is, if, if I don't value, th think of how you feel like, uh, you know, we got parents here, so you're talking to your kids and your kids are paying you no mind. So then you're like, they, they need to listen. They don't listen to me. But they're probably a reflection of the relationship with God. <laughs> God, God can say the same thing, like, they need to listen. They don't listen to me. <laughs> So, you know, once again, you read what you sow, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, like, that's some revelation right there for us, right? This is one of the, <laughs> one of the reasons why so many Christians, so many Christians, I kind of blended Christians and questions, but uh, one of the reasons why, why Christians have so many questions concerning God's will is because they are not thoroughly engaged and acquainted with his word. So if you're not engaged in the creator with his word, of course you're going to have questions about his will because you don't really know his will. You're kind of like, you're, 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 you're living in that assumption. So it's important that we do a few things, that we read, study, and meditate on the word on a regular basis. Read, reading, studying, and meditating on the word on a regular basis will keep the word in our heart. Reading, studying, and meditating on the word will keep the word in our heart. Let's go to Psalms 1. It says... Uh, Blessed, favored is the man that walketh not the counsel, counsel, those are words of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of, of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and that whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Meditate on the word day and night. And, you know, as we've grown in our life and as we uh, uh, serve other people, that's, you see the difference. Like, people, you, when you're in the word, you'll see, like, everything flowing around you. It just seems like everything is falling in place. And then when you, and it's a, the temptation is to rest with success. Did you hear that? That's the temptation to rest with success. All right, so uh, now I was talking to the young man, but there's quite a few of us adults to do the same thing. All right, so so things are going well. So you you say to yourself, "Well, cool, I can take a break on the word." And you know, some of us are old enough to realize. You ever see how like you take a break on the word, and you think you're just gonna take that day?